Hey guys, Chris Sider here, founder of Ex-Boyfriend Recovery, and today we're going to be talking about the fastest way to get your ex back. But before we dive into that, I'd first like to offer you an opportunity to come by our website and take the Ex-Recovery Chances Quiz. It's a simple little two-minute quiz that's going to give you an idea if this is even worth it, if you even have a chance with your ex-boyfriend. So all you have to do to find that quiz is simply go to our website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com. There's going to be a prompt to take the quiz right there on our homepage, or if that's a little too confusing or too much work, hey, just look in the description of this video. There's a link that will link you right to the correct page to take the quiz. About a year ago, I wrote an article entitled, The Fastest Way to Get Your Ex-Boyfriend Back. And ultimately, I never really thought much about how to speed this process up. In fact, I was asked once by someone, um, how can I get my ex back? What's the fastest way? And I gave him a pretty generic answer. There is no fastest way. But it's often when you guys actually challenge my advice or my strategies that I actually can take a step back and look at it with a new pair of eyes. And so I looked at my overall strategy and thought, hmm, Maybe I can make this faster. But the only question was how. And so in order for me to properly teach you right here, right now, the fastest way to get your ex-boyfriend back, we first have to answer a very basic question. What is the average length of time that it takes for someone to actually win their ex back? And that's when I got a really interesting idea. You see, we have a Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group, secret so no one's exes can see that they're in it. And I kind of used the Facebook group as a way to start polling how long it's taking these women and certain men to get their exes back. The results were pretty shocking. On average, it takes about three to six months for a woman to get her ex back. <laughs> and on average, and on average, it takes about four to six months for a man to get his ex back. <laughs> Now, that research is based on just polling data that I've done personally. The actual sample size isn't as large as I would have liked, but that should give us a starting point to understand, okay, this is kind of how long it should take you to get your ex back, anywhere from three to six months. So the question now becomes, how can we speed that process up? Now, I'd like to do something for you. I would like to tell you kind of my general strategy for getting an ex back. Now, what you're looking at right now is actually that article I was talking about at the beginning of this video. This is the article I wrote that's entitled The Fastest Way to Get Your Ex Back, right? And so what you're seeing here is the general strategy and how long it normally takes someone to get their ex back, usually anywhere between three to six months. And what you're seeing now is the sped up version. So let's talk about the sped up version for a little bit. Now the cusp of this strategy has four basically points. You've got the no contact rule, text messaging, you've got advancing from text messaging to phone calls, and then you have dating. So let me ask you a question. How do you think we can speed this process up? Ooh, 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 pick me, pick me. Go ahead, Chris. Why don't we just go faster? Ah, you're falling into the common pitfall that I thought you'd fall into. By simply going faster, it doesn't necessarily mean your chances will improve because ultimately the entire point of this is to get an ex back, right? So certain things need to happen first. I don't get it. Well, you were always a little slow. Look, the basic gist of it devolves down to this. You have a four-step strategy, the no contact rule, text messaging, phone calls, dating, and then obviously if that goes well, you will potentially get your ex back, right? The progression of those steps is important. Things happen naturally. If you speed that process up, you ruin the natural aspect of it and your chances will be lower. Still don't get it. Okay, think about it like this. It's not about speeding up the whole process and getting him or her back tomorrow. It's about speeding up the process where you can so your chances aren't harmed. Oh, I get it. Very clever. So let's take this from the top. There are four simple strategies to use to get your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend back. 
how can we speed those up so our chances aren't harmed? Let's take something as basic as the no contact rule. As you can see here, the no contact rule is a period of time where you ignore your ex without talking to them, right? That is the no contact rule, but the question is, how long? Now, typically speaking, we've found three time frames really work best with the no contact rule. The 21 day rule, the 30 day rule, and the 45 day rule. So what works best here? Well, since we're trying to speed this process up, Maybe the 21 day rule is best to use here, but this really, we're operating under a pretty basic assumption. What's, what's the assumption? Well, we're operating under the assumption that your ex is going to be a willing participant throughout this process. And oftentimes I find exes aren't willing. Yes, I see your point. So how can we overcome that? Well, the best way to overcome it is to constantly remind your ex that you're there without actually being there. So take something like the no contact rule, right? You're going to be using the no contact rule for 21 days. Was that 12 or 21? 21 days, right. Okay, so with the 21 day rule, you don't have a lot of time to really do things that will cultivate your own personal life. So maybe instead of focusing on that, we can focus specifically on doing things or publishing things on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram that shows him what he's missing out on so that he's constantly reminded that you're there without you having to actually speak to him. This can speed the process up a little bit. Now here's where things get tricky, text messaging. Now to me, this is really where you're going to make or break your chances if you're doing this sped up process. Because with text messaging, the way we want it to work is after the no contact period, your ex misses you so much, he's dying to hear from you. And so when he does finally hear from you, he immediately wants to see you on that date. So we're trying to expedite this texting process, but what happens if your ex is not really getting you anything? What happens after the 21 day no contact rule if you text your ex or he texts you and you get into a conversation with him but he doesn't respond and he's not giving you any signal that he's interested on continuing the rebuilding of attraction phase? What do you do then? Well, that's the case where you really try to determine if this is the right strategy for your ex or not. Oftentimes people ask me, well, what's the most important thing I need to do to get my ex back? And I say, it's not so much about what you do, it's about how you adapt. So you're thinking, okay, I want to get my ex back as fast as humanly possible. Okay, it's possible, maybe not probable, but let's say you go through the process I'm talking about here on this video. And things seem to be going pretty well throughout the no contact rule, but when you get to the text phase, he's giving you nothing. Well, in that case, you kind of have to step back and rethink your plan. So first I'd like to talk to you a little bit about risk and reward. So what I'm talking to you about today, this fast X batch strategy is a high risk strategy. But if you really think about it, everything that we do when we try to get our X's back is high risk. There's always certain risks you're taking, but this is probably one of the highest risks trying to expedite this strategy. But oftentimes high risk yields high reward. So we're using the text message part of our strategy as kind of our checkpoint. And if things are going well, you can continue forward with this fast strategy. But if things aren't going well, guess what? You have to quit doing this fast strategy and go back to the more traditional one. So we already talked about what to do when things aren't going well. Let's talk about what to do when things are going well. When things are going well, what we're going to try to do is advance from the text message phase to a phone call phase. Now getting on the phone is essential. Why? Because you can do so much more on the phone. You can engage him in engaging conversations. You can hear his reactions to what you're saying and you can actually really build up a, a case for a date. So we're typically going to spend around three days in the phone call phase, assuming things are going well. And throughout those three days, every single time you're on the phone, you're dropping a hint for a date and you're eventually trying to advance up this value ladder so that you can get your date. All right, so let's map out these phone calls. We're gonna do three phone calls. Let's assume that you've advanced this far into the stage where you're going to be talking to him on the phone. Well, what is that first phone call going to look like? Well, the first phone call needs to be anywhere from 30 minutes to to 60 minutes. You need to start dropping hints about something that you can potentially start doing together and you need to engage him in a conversation where you really can get a back and forth type dynamic. 
This is not one of those one-sided conversations that's awkward. If you're sensing that is the conversation you're having here with him, it might be time to rethink things. Okay, now let's talk about the second phone call. The second phone call only happens if the first phone call went well. Now the second phone call, where the first one was between 30 to 60 minutes, this one for sure is going to have to be a minimum a minimum, excuse me, of 60 minutes to 90 minutes. And again, you're dropping that hint for the date and you're just basically building up on, on the foundation that you built with that first phone call. Now the third phone call is really where you start pushing him on the date. You've already dropped the two hints. The, the third phone call is going to be anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. You're going to be pushing him on that date. You're going to be dropping the hints. And even if by the end of the phone call that, you know, he hasn't asked you out on a date, Guess what? You have to take the reins and try to ask him out on the date because you're trying to do a fast strategy. Now, if things don't go well, guess what? You have to go back to the traditional method of trying to get him back. But if things do go well, guess what? You found yourself on a date. Now, to me, this is where things get really tricky because you haven't had a lot of time to build the proper foundation if you're expediting this process. So, to make matters worse, usually I recommend at least going on three dates before you start pushing him for a commitment. But you don't have that luxury since you're trying to go fast. So instead of doing the traditional three dates, we're going to be doing a new two date method. So let's break it down. Ultimately, what you're trying to create here on these two dates is scarcity, urgency, and a fear of loss. If you cannot find some sort of synergistic way to combine those into the dates, you're dead in the water. So date number one, it needs to be probably a small date, but it needs to last longer than the traditional method where you're simply just meeting him for coffee and leaving when that you get to the high point. Date number one here is more about engaging him in a conversation and getting him excited to want to see you again. Okay, so you're also going to be dropping some sort of scarcity and urgency hints, right? So you need to be pushing his buttons a little bit, not making him jealous per se, but maybe alluding to a friend, if you will. Okay, so that's date number one. Date number two is really where the big thing is going to happen. With date number two, you're really going to be focusing on getting that commitment because you are trying, guess what, to do this as fast as as humanly possible. So what you need to do is make this a romantic date. So I've often found that the best way to get a commitment out of a man is to put him in a romantic environment where he's expected to step up. So imagine this, you're walking on the beach with him. Close your eyes, you're walking on the beach, it's a full moon, beautiful. The waves are going in and out. You're talking, you're talking about all the things you used to do, all the things that you want to do. You're talking about his beliefs, your beliefs. Things are really driving well. Well, you're holding hands, maybe even kissing. When you get to this stage of this date, that's when you look up into his eyes, you bat your eyelashes and say, so what are we? And put the pressure on him. And he's expected to say, oh baby, we're a boyfriend and girlfriend. Now, before I end this video, I do wanna really highlight the fact that this is probably a strategy I wouldn't recommend to anyone to do. I don't really see why a fast strategy would be reliable. Oftentimes, all this strategy will do is lower your chances of getting your ex back. But the question asked here was, is it possible to get my ex back as fast as possible? Well, it is. This is how you would probably have to do it, to have all the necessary things in place. But a lot of it requires commitment from your ex. He has to feel interested in you. You have to be getting those vibes from him, and he has to really work with you throughout this process. If at any stage of the process he's not working with you, you may have just made a major mistake. So that's why this is a high risk, high reward strategy. I wouldn't really recommend this to you, but if you are wanting to expedite this process and make it as quick as humanly possible, this is the way to do it. This is the only conceivable way I can think to do it. And the average time it should take you to properly do this should be around 30 days. So even then, you still have to wait a whole month. All right, guys, this was a blast to film. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We need every bit of you guys to help us out for us to continue doing these videos. And if you haven't already and you want to know if you even have a chance with your ex, stop by our website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com, and we'll prompt you to take a little two-minute ex-recovery chances quiz. Again, it's a quiz that will tell you your chances 
of getting your ex back. So if you haven't already, like, subscribe, take that quiz, and I will see you guys next time.